church. The title of the message today is The Winning Feet. Be listen to the Good morning, church. The title of the message today is The Winning Feet. Before you listen to the full message, hear our scripture and question to highlight the main point. Matthew 26, verse 7 to 8. There came unto him a woman, having an alabaster box of every precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had an indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? Thank you. Now, we will be reading from the book of John 11, 1 to 4. Now, a certain man named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was the Mary that anointed the Lord with ointment. It was the Mary that anointed the Lord with ointment. Therefore, he sent on, his sister sent unto her, saying, Lord, behold, he that his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, the, the he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. Winning faith, all true faith, is the faith that is first to sacrifice the faith that is sacrificed first when the day of trouble has not come. Thank you. Mary did not wait until Lazarus fell sick before she would look for Jesus. The Bible said she met Jesus when everybody was well. Thank you. In fact, Lazarus was an usher in Jesus' ministry. Business was moving, everything was fine, yet she emptied her account and gave it to Jesus, brought oil, poured it on his leg, cried until the tears was a full bucket that it was able to wash his feet. Thank you. The salvation we have is not free because God had to kill somebody and bought salvation with the person's blood. If you have a problem with your rich uncle and you wait until that problem comes and you are trying to make peace with your uncle, will he help you? In this message, you will discover what and what to do before the day of trouble comes so that God can speedily handle your problems as you listen may be blessed. Thank you. I will be speaking on the winning faith. I didn't say the living faith, the winning faith, the faith that wins, amen? If we're talking of something like the winning faith, that means there's also a faith that is failing. If there's a winning faith, there's a failing faith. As you already know, our text is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 7 to 8, and John chapter 11, verse 1 to 4. Winning faith or true faith is faith that is first to sacrifice. Faith that sacrifices first when the day of trouble has not come. That is winning faith. Many Christians today have a failing faith because they wait until their problem comes before they begin to run helter skelter. Why are you fasting in the midst of the problem? It means the problem came and met you and you were not prepared. And as a soldier, you must be prepared before the war comes. But a situation where you are not prepared and the war comes, you are not a good soldier. Remember, the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God before the day of battle comes. But when the day of battle is near and you're trying to look for the whole armor of God, you will never get it because when the war comes, there will be confusion. When the war comes, there will be confusion. So the woman in Matthew chapter 26 took her most precious possession and wasted it on Jesus. Even when she was not sick, her brother Lazarus was not sick, her sister Martha was not sick, none of her family members or friends was under pressure. Everybody was fine, business was booming, school was booming, everybody was well. She took everything she had and gave and considered Jesus to be
be the prophet. She gave to the prophet even when she needed nothing from the prophet. She built a relationship with Jesus even when problems had not yet come into her life. That was why when problem came upon the brother, she had the boldness to call upon Jesus and Jesus answered her quickly. Why? She built a relationship with Jesus when problems had not yet come. She did not wait until the brother was sick or dead when the doctors would say they have to operate on him before she ran and carried oil and say, man of God, I will give you this. That is what many churches are doing today. Thank you. We have brought business in the church because there are wicked people in the church. You tell them the truth, they don't want. They want God to repent and follow their own way. There is a saying that says, since birds have learned how to fly without perching, hunters also have learned how to shoot without missing. You didn't get that. Since birds have learned how to fly silently, hunters also have decided to shoot without missing. That is what is happening. That is happening in every church now. Most of the churches, when the member says they have sense, the pastor says, okay, I will deal with you. That is what is going on. When you come, they'll say, go and buy this one. Go and buy that one. They call it spiritual material. Go and, before I pray for you, go and buy that one. Why? Because you have run away from the primary duty you are supposed to do as a Christian without anybody trying to convince you or to force you. You are claiming that you know how to play mathematics. You, you know the scripture that says, freely you give, freely you receive. But in the hospital, you never quoted it, but in the church, you quoted it there. In the church, you sat on the chair free. Even when you were sleeping free, you never quoted it. You quoted it. But when you went to the hospital, you will pay for everything. You never quoted it there. So, since birds have learned how to fly without patching, hunters also have learned how to shoot without missing. The problem of this, our generation, is that we don't make relationships with God when we are not in problem. Mary didn't, Mary didn't wait for, Mary didn't wait until Lazarus fell sick before she could look for Jesus. The Bible says she met Jesus when everybody was well. Thank you. In fact, Lazarus was an usher in Jesus' ministry and business was moving. Everything was fine, yet she emptied her account and gave it to Jesus. Brought oil, poured on his leg, cried until the tears was a full bucket that it was able to wash his feet. She has no money to buy a towel again because her account was empty. But she, but she got some hair on her head that could do the job. Man of God, I don't have anything but you have hair on your head. Man of God, I don't have money to buy a bucket to fetch water but you have tears in your eyes. You are waiting for your boyfriend to break your heart before tears will come out. There is a better location to shed tears. You cannot cry when a message hits you, but you can cry when your boyfriend says it is over. Damn nonsense. Messages in the church cannot make you cry, but you can watch a Nigerian movie and begin to cry as if it is important. You can watch African magic and begin to bomb cry, shouting, God, no, God, no, and it's a film you are watching. You will hear them saying something like, ah, man of God, you have been long, we hear this kind of message. But when you go and watch African magic, you'll be jumping in the room alone. You see yourself, you have turned Christianity into a mental asset. Mental asset means a calculative work. If you wait for problems to come before you make friends with the solution giver, they will suspect you at that moment because many are those who run to him in the days of trouble, and after trouble, they run from him. So if you want him to answer you, make friends with him even when trouble have not yet come you are not fasting now you are not praying now because problem has not come right but the day problem come any fasting you fast will be a payment of the day you have not fasted you'll be thinking you'll be thinking you are fasting to solve the problem but god will convert your fasting as a discipline to discipline you he will convert it and put it on that record of waste thank you We gave 12 days and night fasting in January. You never fasted because you are not sick. Your life was fine. Things was fine. Food was everywhere. You never fasted because according to you, there's no reason for you to fast. You don't pray unless a problem comes. It's when a problem comes, that's when you began to sing worship songs. You now become a hymn book. When you're in trouble, when trouble comes, you become a hymn book. But when there's no trouble, when trouble doesn't come at all, God never knew that you know how to sing. 
what are we doing? It's like we go for army training on the day that war has come. That is what we are doing now direct. There's no other interpretation than this one. You don't prepare before trouble. You wait when the trouble comes before you begin to prepare. Hello, Mary did not wait for her brother to be in the hospital before she carried the oil and was looking for Jesus to pour on his head. Man of God, I want to sow a seed in your life. When you come and drop it and the man of God asks you to kneel down so that I should pray for you, that is when you began to tell him that you have one complaint and it's about your mother who is suffering from her hernia, lying in the hospital, waiting to be operated. But you told them not to that the God of Papa will heal her. When they want to operate her, when they want to operate her, the operation will cost 500,000 naira, and the seed you dropped was 5,000 naira. While the operation will cost 500,000 naira, you told them not to operate her for 500,000 naira, and you brought 5,000 naira and gave the man of God. What is going on here? Is this not a typical business? Is the business you are doing? You brought 500,000 in order to buy cut the protocol and met a man of God with a big request. You use it as a clear way to bypass the protocol and met a man of God with a big request because he's a mathematician, a calculative, a calculative one. If you wait until a problem comes before you are trying to make peace with your uncle, will he help you? Make peace with your uncle on the day that your wedding time has not reached. Thank you. Can you see how Christians keep adding problems to another? You cannot make friends with mighty men in the days of peace. You wait when the snake starts chasing you. You are like a rat that when the snake chases, you go and begin to dig a hole, which is very risky. When you go, if you want to make friends with man of God, don't wait until there's a prayer point before you go and meet the man of God. We'll see you and suspect you as a calculative mathematician who wants to use our brain. We, I know the Bible said freely we receive, freely give. But if we received it freely, why are you powerless? Or did, do you, don't you know where they got the power from? Or bef before you arrived there was the power finished? Or was the power exhausted before your arrival? Almost everybody here have water in the house because the water is free. But some people had to buy it from the water truck pusher. So is the water also free? Even Christ, our salvation, is not free. Because God had to kill somebody to buy our, our salvation. Thank you. And when you walk naked, the same people you walk naked for will be the same people that will castigate you for walking naked. Yes, they will dress well. And when a man of God dresses anyhow, they will begin to mock him. And they are the very ones that will be quoting the same scripture which says, Freely you receive. When they came to marry your daughter, how much do you buy her from God? You, you even signed a certificate, and those certificates are receipts that you have sold your daughter to prove that he paid in full. You will put a big price and shamelessly quote a price of 200,000 naira and want to be called the modern law the next day. Now, you forgot that freely you receive, freely give. So, the Bible does not quote for that one. You only quote when the pastor wants to pray for somebody. Africa. Stop twisting the Bible to fit your wrongs. Twist your life to fit the Bible. Don't twist the Bible to fit your life. Let your life match the Bible and not the Bible to match your life. How much do you buy the gift from God? If it was by money, good Lord Jonathan would have bought plenty of children. Men of God too paid to go to seminary. They bought the Bible too with money. And it's from the same Bible that they are administering prayers. So if you want to go to Matthew chapter 10 verse 8, and a man of God, so it tells you to sow a seed and your child wants to marry. Men of God too will quote the same book, chapter and verse. The truth is our pastors, we are exposed to attack and we cannot attack back because if you throw back one stone, the news will spread everywhere and they are in church everywhere. Please put your hands together for Jesus.